pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the music of Japan. I have sent all the elementary teachers the three different worksheets that you can interact with while you're listening to this video or watching this video. So there are two forms of traditional Japanese music. There are shomyo, which is Buddhist chanting, and gagaku, which is performance music. The word for music in Japanese is angaku, which translates to sound joy. So the first instrument I'm going to be talking about, and you'll have to forgive me for my pronunciations, but the dadaiku is a large festive drum that is used for outdoor gagaku performances. A gagaku orchestra performance consists of wind, string, and percussion instruments. In the orchestra, they place the two large drums on both sides of the stage. And if you're looking at the worksheet, um, there is a <clears throat> little code that you can scan to watch this performance. So the next instrument is a kakako. It is a double-headed drum that was developed in Japan. The drum sits sideways on a stand so it can be played by bocce sticks on both drum heads. Kakako is another instrument used in gagaku performances. The third instrument is the chindan taiko. This is an instrument used in street performances and marching bands in Japan. Chin is the sound of the gong and don is the sound of the drum. So now that we've talked about a few instruments, I want you to tell me what your favorite Japanese instrument was and why. Maybe tell me one fun fact that you learned about the music in Japan. And also, if you have any questions about the music of Japan, let me know what they are. For some extra exploration of J Japanese music, you can do some research and then tell me three fun facts you learned about it. All right, thanks for listening. I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, this is Miss Smith, and today I'm going to be reading you a story called Bunny Hop, and it's about a Yorkie puppy. And this is Willow, our Yorkie puppy. And I know if you're like me, you like reading stories about animals, especially animals like you have at your own house. So I'm going to hand Willow to Levi so we can read our story. And our story, Bunny Hop, is about a little Yorkie puppy, and it's written by Don Munson. Now, Miss Munson wrote this story about her own Yorkie puppy. And at the end of the story, I'll show you a picture of Bunny. But let's go ahead and get started. Bunny Hop, the story of a Yorkie puppy. Okay. What a wonderful day to be born, barked the baby Yorkshire Terrier. She and her two brothers looked like little mice. Their fur was wet and it was licked clean by their loving mom. The first brother was born the biggest. I think your name will be Bear, said mom. Bear let out a big bark. See, there's the mommy Yorkie and the baby Yorkie. The second brother was born and he was very sweet and friendly. How about the name Buddy, asked mother. Buddy wagged his tail and nodded yes. And what about the little girl? Hmm, said mom. The little girl puppy hopped and let out a tiny bark. Because you hop, you hop like a rabbit, I shall name you Bunny. Bear, Buddy, and Bunny grew big enough to play in the yard. They played and ate and played some more. One day, Bunny saw a hole in the fence. Oh no. The next day when nobody was looking, Bunny squeezed through the hole so she could see the outside world. In front was a big open field. She ran and hopped everywhere and found lots of new things to sniff. Willow does that. She'll run around and she sniffs everything. After a while, it was time to go home. 
She looked one way and then another. Uh-oh. Bunny was lost. Mommy! She yelled out, but no one heard her. Suddenly, Bunny heard a horrendous howl. Across the field was a huge coyote with big, sharp teeth. He saw Bunny and headed towards her. Bunny hopped. Was it a friendly coyote, she wondered. The coyote growled and nipped at her. Guess not, she whimpered, and she ducked under a log just in time. Without looking back, Bunny ran and ran, zigzagging all over the place. A hole, she yelped, and in she leapt. Huffing and puffing, catching her breath, Bunny was safe. If you look real close, you can see her down in the hole. It says, the hole Bunny jumped into was a small den for a family of rabbits. The mom and dad were snacking on some lettuce. On a rug sat two baby rabbits. The rabbits wondered, who is this tiny puppy who jumped into our home? Hi, she said, my name is Bunny. Then she hopped like a rabbit, and everybody laughed. The baby rabbits started hopping too. They became fast friends. Back at home, Bunny's mother began to worry. Where did she go? Bear and Buddy helped their mom look for Bunny. We've had to look for Willow a few times, haven't we? She likes to get into stuff. That night, the three cried themselves to sleep. But Bunny was having a good time hopping with the baby rabbits. <laughs> that night she slept between them with a big smile on her face. <laughs> the next morning, Bunny woke up with the rabbit family. Come on, let's find something to eat, said Father Rabbit. One by one, they all jumped out of the den. Bunny too. Oh look, carrots, said Mother Rabbit. Bunny was not used to eating carrots but they were not so bad. And then they come across some wild flowers and they all began chewing, but Bunny did not like flowers, so she looked for other things to eat. She saw something wiggle under the leaves. With a quick movement, Bunny snatched up the little field mouse between her teeth. Puppies kind of do that sometimes, don't they? Bunny never caught a mouse before. She wanted to show the rabbits. But when she turned around, there was a look of horror on their faces. Scared those bunnies. The whole rabbit family hopped away from Bunny as fast as they could, screaming in panic. Bunny let the little mouse go and chased after them. When Bunny reached the den, she could not enter. They had blocked the hole with straw. Go away and leave us alone, said the rabbits. But I would never hurt you, cried Bunny. I love you. Sorry, Bunny, they told her. Meat eaters make us nervous. Now please go away. Bunny understood why the rabbits had to be so careful. But now she was alone again. She missed her family more than ever. She howled sadly as she walked. How do you think a puppy would howl? Would it go? <laughs> as she passed by a big fence, Bunny kept crying. Surprisingly, on the other side was her mother and brothers with their ears perked up. Bear and Buddy yelled out, Bunny, is that you? Bunny stopped. She heard barks of excitement on the other side of the fence. Yes, it's me, she barked. Running back and forth, Bunny found the hole she'd escaped, escaped from the day before. She wiggled through and leapt into her mother's arms. And then she hugged her brothers too. Bunny jumped with joy. Look, Mom, Bear chuckled. She's doing the bunny hop again. I love my three babies so much, said Mother, and they all laughed and played with silliness. Then they went inside for some dog food and a nice nap. Everyone was so happy. As for the fence, Bunny's mom made sure the hole was fixed right away. And sometimes at night, when everyone is asleep, Bunny thinks of the rabbits and says a little prayer. May the rabbit family be happy, healthy, and all right. The end. And right here is a picture of the real bunny that the author wrote a story about. Now, I think we could probably come up with a story about our willow, couldn't we? Yeah. 
And I bet you could come up with a story about your pet at two. So I encourage you to think of a little make-believe story because this is make-believe, this is fiction. This didn't really happen, but the author had fun writing a story about her pet. I bet you could write a story about your pet too. Remember, we may not be together in person, but all of you are in our hearts as we send you Howls from Home.